do the stirrup and Joris and he, I galloped, Dirk galloped, and we galloped all three. Good speed, cried the watch as the gate bolts drew, undrew. Speed echoed the wall to us galloping through. Behind shut the postern, the light sank to rest, and into the midnight we galloped abreast. Not a word to each other, we kept the great pace, neck by neck, stride by stride, never changing our place. I turned in my saddle and made the girths tight, then shortened each stirrup and set the peak right, rebuckled the cheek strap, chain slacker the bit, nor galloped less steadily, roll on the bit, a whit. Twas moon set at starting, but while we drew near <coughs> Locarin, Locarin, the cocks crew and twilight dawn near clear. This part of me. At boom, a great yellow star came out to sea. At Duffeld, t'was morning as plain as could be. And from Mechtkelm church steeple, we heard the half chime. So Joris broke silence with, yet there is time. At Airshot, up leaped of a sudden the sun, and against him the cattle stood black, every one. To stay through the mist at us, to stare through the mist at us galloping past, and I saw my stout galloper Roland at last. With resolute shoulders, each butting away the haze as some buff river headland it sprayed. And his low head and crest, just one sharp ear bent back, for my voice and the other pricked out on his track. And one eye's black intelligence, ever that glance or its white edge at me, his own master askance. And the thick, heavy spoon flakes, which I and anon his fierce lips shook upward in galloping on. By Hasselt, Dirk groaned and cried out, and cried, Joris, stay, stay spur. Your ruse galloped bravely, the false not in her. We'll, uh, we'll remember at X, for one heard the quick wheeze of her chest, saw the stretched neck and staggering knees, and sunk tail in horrible heave of the flank, and as down on her haunches she shuddered and sank. So we were left galloping, Joris and I, past Luz and past Tongres, no cloud in the sky. The broad sun above <coughs> laughed a pitiless laugh. Neath our feet broke the brittle of bright stubble like chaff, till over Van Elm a dome spire sprang white, and Gallop gasped, gasped Joris for X is in sight. How, how they'll greet us, and in a moment his roan rolled neck over croup over, rolled neck and croup over, lay dead as a stone. And there is my Roland to bear the whole weight of the news which alone could save X from her fate. With his nostrils like pits full of blood to the brim, with, and the circles of red up for his eye sockets rim. Then I cast off my buff coat, each holster let fall, shook off both my jack boots, let go belt and all, stood up in the stirrup, leaned, patted his ear, called my Roland his pet name, my horse without peer, clapped my hands, laughed and sang, any noise, bad or good, till at length into aches Roland galloped and stood. And all I remember is friends flocking round as I sat with his head twixt my knees on the ground, and no voice but was praising this Roland of mine as I poured down his throat our last measure of wine, which the Burgesses voted by common consent was no more than his due who brought good news from Ghent. I sprang to the stirrup and Joris and he, I galloped, Dirk galloped, we galloped all three. It just Left me right along. Entitled Ezra Barkley because it's about Ezra Barkley. <laughs> it was many, many years ago, back in '44, that Ezra Barkley stepped outside and then was seen no more. Some say his debts were killing him. Some say he killed a man. Whatever it was, whatever it was, was writing him. Seems Ezra Barkley ran. Some say Ezra Barkley's wife had a lover on the side and wanted free to marry him, so Ezra Barkley died. But when the seven years had passed and law proclaimed him dead, Ezra Barkley's widow took no one to her bed. He left a stormy, dreadful night as bad as it could be. In spite of that, did Ezra take his chances on the sea? With thunder crashing overhead and lightning flashing down on frost-filled seas which found no ease, did Ezra Barkley drown? Then one day a knocking came on Ezra Barkley's door, and when his widow opened it, she fainted to the floor, for outside stood Ezra Barkley, as live as live could be. The neighbors all came running this miracle to see. He never gave a reason. He never said a word of where he, where or why he went away, why no one ever heard anything about him or knew wherever he did go. 
since Ed Sir Barkley would not say, then we will never know. That's <laughs> 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 good. Because I was so dis well, first of all, I wrote it because of, I was very disturbed by it all. And then I put it aside, and I, as I do with many of my poems, I bring them back, and I, I see that they're <coughs> relevant today, um, unfortunately. So anyway, it, it is called The Death March. <clears throat> he waved goodbye. He did. The president did. With a flash of a grin and a pass of his hand, Godspeed, he bid. <coughs> but wait, I pleaded, where? Please say, toward what aim will God speed them? Why do they leave? To honor whose name? He turned around slowly, he did, the president did, and with a drop of the head and a whisk of his coat, his countenance he hid. I looked and I waited, but he had nothing to say. As he ducked behind guards who protect his life, he turned further away. I surged and I reached, please, tell me, toward what place are you to go next? At what new event? will appear in your <coughs> smiled face. Absent a reply, I turned to watch. I did, to watch young boys as they marched away towards some final grave with hardly a noise. Then I looked back at the man, I did, to see him creep into a black limousine, off to a new convocation, leaving moms here to weep. Where, I employed everyone, please, where can we go to end his parade? to stop his charade, war's folly to show. With lights all ablaze and banners high-flying, the president's half smiles, while parents are left sighing and more kids go to dying. I feel lost and defeated since there's nothing to win. As our leaders go on lying, the soldiers will keep dying. Let the funerals begin. <laughs> On a, on a politician's oh. face. Mm -hmm. It isn't active, like smiling. Okay. It's, he's always smiled. Mm -hmm. Just and posing I, for the cameras, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I like it for that reason, too. <laughs> In the same way I, I played with half smiles. At first I had, he was all smiles. Mm -hmm. But I wrote this when I was watching George Bush, George W. Bush, and he had a half, kind of a half smile, if you ever watch him. Mm -hmm. He smiles with only half of his face. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't say all smiles, he was just half smiles. For a change of pace, I have a French uh, grandmother who told me wonderful stories and she actually told me the story of La, La Dame Blanche, the, the white lady, <coughs> the, 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 the white woman. And, and it's a, a part of French folklore, a vision uh, that may foretell death or troubles coming. But anyway, sometimes it comes to right here to River City. I have a footnote to your footnote. <laughs> okay, this is entitled The White Lady. You might not believe what I'm about to tell you. These things don't usually occur in Athens, Ohio. Long ago, my French grandmother warned me about her. It happened very recently. I encountered the white lady. I was hiking on the bike path when she appeared suddenly from beneath a bridge, scaring me witless. Chalk white, but beautiful, she boldly blocked my way, demanding that I dance with her before proceeding. <laughs> When, as a poor dancer, I demurred, she became very angry. <coughs> Raging, she pushed me into the brambles and then vanished. I have returned to this same spot many times since, hoping to again find her and to come to an understanding. At times, I wish I had danced with this haunting spirit, and I guess the white lady has yet to forgive me. So far, to me at least, she has refused to reappear. However, this much is certain. I now know dread. <laughs> <laughs> well, she thought it was a sorceress, or a wise woman, or a witch, or an angel, or a 
right actually in the French go check me on this but the, the French word for fairy is fay isn't it F-E-E uh, so it's sometimes thought of as a fairy rather than, than simply a, a, a But she doesn't sound like an angel. Right. No, 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 she's definitely a scary dame. She's not, she's a... And sometimes they're more, they're like, in some versions of the myth, there are several of them. It's Les Dames uh, Blanche instead of La Dame. Do you know where the white comes from? White is a symbol of death. That's, I think yes. that's where it comes from. Uh, no black. No black. You know, in some cultures, black is death, and some white is death. And one for her. I'm thinking about maybe a white bird myth or something. Well, there's another. You know. if, you're, if you're a white bird, sometimes it signifies death. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a powerful image. And uh, congratulations on my 92nd birthday. Yes. I mean, yeah, happy yeah. birthday. When? Uh, May 5th. May 5th. Good month. Many, I'll, I'll try to. Uh, birthdays. Early birthdays, childhoods, happy times, with song sing-alongs and fun-filled rhymes, with toys and treats and chocolate sweets, and years that passed many times. Birthdays that come and go, like, like, like lightning strikes and falling snow. Old people react in many ways. They, their favorite song is Happy Birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it was a good day. <laughs> lightning strikes and falling snow. That's, a great, like that. that's a great line. <laughs> And for the camera, we should say that birthdays is spelled B I R T H D A Z E. Yeah, so the camera can't read the can't same read. Except that to treasure our relationships, is that the purpose of life? To eat, drink, and be merry, to reproduce, to replicate, to feel that we won, that what we want, we can take to be masters of, th of all things earthly, to live only for pleasure, is that the purpose of life? To make a difference, to be authentic, to offer the best of our essence, with everyone to be empathic, to leave the world better than we found it, is that the purpose of life? Just to play a part in evolution, to be a bridge between past and future, to worship no god but nature, to deny all religious revelation, to live just to live. <coughs> Is that the purpose of life? Is that the purpose of life, just to be? If we don't just be, none of the rest of this can happen. True. <laughs> but still, um, <clears throat> I just posed a question and each one can, yeah, yeah. can answer it. Yeah. As, uh, as Ben said, I'm, I, I don't know if there is a purpose, but if there is one, then what is it? <laughs> you, you answer the question for yourselves. And the purpose the, of the bacteria? Mm. Yeah, is my purpose well, as long as they different live. than that of a pine yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is life. Tempus fugit is the next one. <laughs> the present is an instant. <laughs> the past is all we know, all we have been, even as it mercilessly recedes into oblivion. Time flees, never to return, carrying away what we call dear, reserving only vanishing memories. It leaves behind the kisses and caresses, the dreams and expectations, the victories and defeats, the things that made us kings, the things we thought would never end. Life is a slave to the passage of time, except for that instant we call the present, when it is free. This moment of freedom promises infinite possibilities, dreams without boundaries, until the moment passes and becomes a slave of the past. Every instant is a portal to the future, 
but ways more as a window to the past. We dwell in the flow of time. Out of a dewy dream, the future becomes the present, albeit only so briefly, then closes within a dream and merges with other memories. Time flows like a brisk wind. Each gust brings an unexpected turn. Who understands the design of time and its mystery? Time slows with gravity and motion. Time quickens with intensity and emotion. Time is a paradox, an illusion. Flowers gather time to bloom. Time never blooms, it only transits. The lofty, the lofty milestones and successes, being milestones, being successes, both shine bright in our imagination and become manifestos of our worth, though frail as flowers in a raging storm, passing phantoms carried away by time. The present disappears, but it leaves its shadow behind. Savor your friendships. Drink your wine slowly. Live the present moment leisurely, reverently, without rushing to the future. The present is the axis on which your life revolves. Moments is all we have. Tempus fugit. Vite fugit. Time flees. Life flees. Until the last moment, that instant when we no longer have a future, when everything is past, and we close our eyes. Mm -hmm. I really like in the second, the end of the second stanza, we dwell in the flow of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That so, popped out at me. Mm -hmm. The boys wandering toward the river, bait and tin cans, minnows caught behind the fairgrounds, they hoped to catch fleck blown trout. They did not speak. The glorious feeling of mud between their toes, sun reddened necks, boy smells, river smells, summer smells. Songs sung by red winged blackbirds. PB and J sandwiches, apples, cookies, and paper sacks. These boys are the lucky ones. Free to roam, no fear. We who love boys wish all of them the same. Hmm. Good. <laughs> yeah. I need to change the order of the words in the last two. Yeah. We who love all, boys wish, wish all them them. all the same is the way it's written. And you said we wish all of them. Which? The second we yeah, we wish them all the same. Mm -hmm. you yeah, I read it backwards, I just but I do that at least once. She does <laughs> that just to <laughs> see that you were listening. <laughs> yes. Probably <laughs> more often. I don't know if I question you all. I'm easy. <laughs> don't rush, Joy. Hold on. Tom, I love the pictures that you create with your poems. This uh -huh. is a, it's really a, you know, you can. If not only you can see them, you can you can smell the smell. Smell. Measure, measure, I was thinking measure, this. Measure. Oh, that's uh, fuel cooking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know on the back side of that piece of paper we have girls. Oh. <laughs> Save the best for last. What do girls do on the summer days? Giggle, climb trees, plan a future. Today a dancer, tomorrow a healer. Before summer is past, all possible things. But today, today is a day to walk to the end of the road, to peer into another place, to find a pretty snow, stone, to listen to the wind in the pines, <coughs> watch a spider build its web, sing song, words never written on paper. Girl things. Mm. <laughs> right. Well, these are pains to childhood. The wonders and the glory of childhood. Yeah. yeah. Both of them are. Yeah. 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 yeah for wonderful. Joy's ability to put images in her work is constant. Well, kids are great. 
That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. We all ought to drop whatever we're doing and just work for the benefit of kids. Yes. Well, you capture <laughs> the difference between girls and boys, too. I'm constantly astonished at the difference in the play patterns of my female mm -hmm. grandchildren as opposed to my male uh, grandchildren. And, and they really are a, a different species. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are. It's a wonder we ever get together. <laughs> I don't know where this gets started. Uh, you know, I'm just an observer. I'm not a, a, a rationalizer. My father used to say, and he had both boys and girls, and said, you move into a new house, your daughters will say, Daddy, come look at this beautiful doorknob on the front door. And your sons will bring it to you saying, look what I found hanging on the door, Dad. <laughs> that, that reminds me, one of my sons said he was very little. We moved into this new house, and he said, oh, the people that lived here must have been rich. He thought the glass doorknobs were diamonds. <laughs> 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 oh. Barefoot boys with cheeks, cheeks of tan. How does that go? Yeah. So, so, yeah. Those, uh, yeah. Some E.E. E. Cummings poems to uh, the wonderful boys and girls called by the, the balloon man. You, know, you remember that one? But uh, all oh. images of a carefree childhood that uh, we all. I think, cherish in our memories. Maybe they were mythological, maybe they never happened, but they seemed wonderful, didn't they? Yes. I have a, a granddaughter. I'm not, I don't know much about girl children, uh, but I, I've always been surrounded by boys and men. And uh, my granddaughter, uh, who is 13 now, is fascinates me. She has this happy little voice and she's very precise in everything she does. I mean to me she's sort of alien. <laughs> I guess that doesn't, that doesn't say much for my girlhood but uh, I, I grew up with boys so I'm used to boys. Do boys ever giggle? Pardon? Oh, sure. Do boys ever giggle? They do. Sure. They, they do. Yeah, you know, these slapping guffaws, we don't giggle. <laughs> no, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. What they giggle what? about? Girls. They mostly <laughs> giggle about they girls. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a wonderful My current fantasy. I would send a messenger drone into your dark heart, I saw, to deposit a kilo of high potency premium grade capitalism. <laughs> One free Land Rover with a gold Rolex in the driver's seat and 10,000 SAR to every determined jihad terrorist who wants to change the world, but could be distracted with wealth. The Saudis owe us that compared to what we've spent. It would be cheap. Same with those Boko Haram bad boys. Plaster them with gold chains. Jeep Cherokees and Nigerian greenbacks with promises of more. If they concede a venture alone or as a group that creates jobs for others, but they must give proof of their wives and children go to good schools and all household adults vote in elections, plus bonuses for all recruits who agree to leave the violence behind, get counseling for their PTSD, and acquire a taste for peace and prosperity. Oh, <laughs> now, of course, if you put a couple of virgins in the Cherokees <laughs> and the uh, Land Rovers, maybe that would be. Wait, is that virgins or Virginians? <laughs> Always a girl. Yeah, yeah that, that one. I don't know. With that yeah. one cartoon had a bunch they of They out Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> so, SAR. This is my first ever footnote. <laughs> Wonderful! <laughs> Yay! Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. So it's 3.7498 to one U.S. dollar. I thought that was interesting. That's today. To, it, no, it was, it was yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. I was listening to uh, the president of Syria this morning. Yeah. And he blames all his troubles on the Saudis. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that he has ISIL breathing down his back. 
he blamed everything on who? The Saudis. Twelve. The Wahhabism. They said that's uh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 this isn't real. This this whole well, my area point, is not real. <laughs> well, much of what he said was not real. He was sort of drifting around in some kind of real. Yeah, they all are, Patricia. Yeah, they, they're all listening. they're all going to go to paradise. I know. I. I that, this isn't even thinking about paradise. It's just right there in everything you said was weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I found it interesting that he did select that particular statement to make uh, why he has so much trouble. Well, it's a damn Saudis. It's like people blame Western Union. In Maine, they blame the French Canadians. It comes straight out of Iran. That's mm -hmm. where it comes from. Carry on. Well, the jihadists are really just people who are looking for a life and some relevancy. And um, I just I was playing with this idea of suddenly throwing a bunch of money at them. <laughs> and what they would do with that, you know, if we had some stipulations on it, of course, and accountability, but I, I just thought, how 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 quickly could it turn a pretty big corner in in what is going on with I mean right now it's you, to be a person who straps uh, high explosives on your chest and then and blow yourself up in the name of Allah uh, I think it, it gives your family a lot of notoriety and money that makes it very attractive. Since you have nothing to begin with and it looks like you've got no future anyways. And so if, if suddenly that whole equation was changed and there was money and in fact and the possibility that hinged on that money was this idea you had to do something constructive with it that helped other people. I think those same people that we consider to be bloodthirsty murderers could become philanthropists uh, if mm. they had the wherewithal to change it. I think you oh. have to throw the money earlier than that. <laughs> I mean, I, I would before agree. Before people are impoverished enough to be led into <laughs> that kind of a jihad. I mean, you normally jihad. It, it doesn't mean go out and murder all the infidels. It often can mean to clean up the the garbage on Court Street or to um, you know to help children with uh, with handicaps to help them learn to walk or something like. Jihad can be a very positive thing. Yeah, uh, we have corrupted it to mean only negative things, just as the Arabs read crusade very differently than we do. Yeah. That uh, you say, well, because when um, George Bush said that, uh, that that we were going into Iran as a crusade, not Iraq, it was a crusade, that just inflamed the whole Arab world because they envisioned guys coming in in their tin suits like four, five, however many hundred years ago. So, you know, jihad really, they don't, they don't think of it as negatively as well, uh, many of had. us. Pardon? I'll be the hand pretty soon. Okay. Education would have been a okay. good input so right. to seek and obtain wealth. Is that the Islamic religion? I don't know. They want power. They, they definitely want to keep the power okay. in Saudi Arabia in the hands of, of men who have the wealth. I think their uh, religion, quotes, so to speak, leaves them, they would just, just 
money would mean anything. I think it's too deeply embedded in their hatred of other cultures. I don't know. I don't know. A Just gold read, Rolex. The, read the Koran. A Land Rover. Read it. Read it. Read it. You know, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gifter. This started in 2004 when I was was an, um, a volunteer at Good Works for the Homeless. So the first line, as a weekend volunteer staff member at the Good Works Home for the Homeless, I first met a man in 2003 whom I call Mr. Gifter. In his past he could have had other nicknames such as shoplifter and drifter, sex abuser, user, and loser, con man, or and con, special ed, and fan of the dead. Those nicknames are not totally behind him as they remain on his rap sheet and as an emotional burden and lingering reality note for which he has to cope. Mr. Gifter now has new friends, one who, ones who care for him. He has a new family. The family of God, he has a new father, our father God. He has a new morality, to give instead of to get. Mr. Gifter regularly attends Bible study in prison and in Athens, where he often arrives with a gift in hand that he has artistically created or an item he found for one of his newfound friends. Having a learning disability and a personality disorder that is managed with psych meds, he now survives on food stamps and a monthly Social Security disability check. Thus, he has little discretionary money. One solution he uses to giving gifts when there is no money is to go dumpster diving for each of his friends. One evening several years ago, Mr. Gifter called me to ask if I would help him haul some stuff that was too much to carry back to his room at the Knight's Inn where he lived and worked at that time. To my surprise, he guided me to the back, or to the, me to park behind a dumpster where he was diving for gifts. As he found an item, I had no experience at such an activity and felt like a thief, even though everything in the dumpster had been thrown away by the store that we were behind. But my attitude more towards Mr. Gifter changed when I saw him present the dumpster items as gifts to his friends. My wife received his dumpster gift, which was what she was most pleased to receive because he matched the gift to her interest and in function of the gift, its design and colors. Thus, these gifts were thoughtfully chosen to fit the personality of each recipient. Mr. Gifter has a second skill in preparing gifts for his friends. He's a talented artist who specializes in creating colored pencil, chalk, markers, and ink drawings of a biblical or floral scene. A trademark of his work is to wrap a streamer around the focal point of the drawing on which he writes a message such as, Jesus loves you, or Happy Valentine's Day. We see the work in the loving heart of Mr. Gifter hanging on a wall of the homes of his friends. We see a transformed man, transformed from being a lifter to becoming a gifter. He gives credit to God for his transformation and his life. During the past month since being picked up from prison again on December the 23rd, 2014. He daily sorts through his collections of belongings that were stored in her house's crossways for the past three years to find an item for Larry, his adopted. He wanted him. I realize it's not a poem, but it's where my head is, and I didn't have time to recompose. Why would the police go to pick him up if you went to a yard sale? There were children there. Oh. 
and the father of the neighboring home turned him in. Uh, because of the child molester bit. Yes. Yeah, sex abuse. Yes. I, I think it's a very interesting story and a very interesting person and a tribute to your, you and your wife's generosity. It, it would be interesting and, and fun to try to put it into verse form. I mean, to yeah. put it into I, it stanzas and a couple to more days. tell it. Yeah, it <laughs> you might, see, I was started working on this but, well, a little bit when it was written earlier, but... Yeah. Uh, I was in the state of trauma yesterday. <laughs> so That's where a, is he right now? It's a very right moving tale that it would make, a, it would make a, a wonderful form. Right now it's a short story. Yeah, right, right. It's right. not a form. Is he in jail right now? He is. He doesn't know how long. But he's had a life in and out. This is why uh, sex abusers often uh, simply vanish. They stop reporting in places where they live, and they just go on the lam, so to speak, because it's so hard to try to live a normal life. And they get no uh, support. There are no 12-step programs for sex offenders that they could go to that would help them stay on the straight and narrow. And I don't mean to excuse any past behavior by any means, but it, it, it is a, a dilemma for them. And we, the way society handles it, I think creates a worse problem, actually. I'm very sorry to hear that he's in prison right now for that. Yeah, that, that seems wrong. Yeah. I mean, all he did was go to the yard sale. Yeah. He did not have contact with the children per se. Right. So, even said, kids, go get your mom. He knew that he shouldn't be there with the children, but he was trying to help them out by being one of their patrons. He really said that. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you were to actually investigate his past, you'd probably find he was a sexually abused kid himself. Mm -hmm or an abused kid, physically abused in some kind of way, or emotionally abused in some way. He has said that. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody came to his defense when he was being abused. But when he acted out in the same way that was done to him, everybody, of course, wanted to nail him, uh, as we do, because <coughs> we can't allow that. <coughs> but we need to move along or we're never going to get to everybody's court mm -hmm. Oh, we don't need more victims. No. No. Definitely no. not. Definitely not. No. Correction system doesn't work hardly anywhere, does it? Revolving yeah. door, recidivism. Whatever, yeah. yeah. But there, there are five agencies trying to help this one guy. So, it's amazing how much how yeah. many attempts are to help? Have 11. Is that okay? And you, okay. he does you attend a class every week. Okay. Is that good? To help. Yeah. So there are some helps. There, there are okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Patricia, what have you got for us? Well, coming along after that, um, I was into. This Saturday is the celebration of Valentine's Day. And before I hand this out and before I, I read it, I want to tell this group that I think today I finally figured out one of the aspects of this group that I really appreciate a lot. And to put it in context, having lived overseas for five years, in a country where English is not the native language and having to use, you know, a lower end of my vocabulary, it is so wonderful and refreshing to hear, you know, everybody using words and I go, oh, I love that word. And it's so nice to hear that. And a couple of words that have already been used, 
are in this poem. Um, maybe I should call it prose, but it, I did work at rhyming. I also had started on another poem, and when it hit me that, you know, this is the last day for our group to get together before Valentine's Day, I shifted gears. And I did make copies of that, but I'm debating whether I want to hand it out or not, because it is a, another riddle. So I thought maybe I should wait until I have it finished to give to you all. Or should I let you have two weeks to figure it out? <laughs> there might be one extra if you give back to me. Sorry, man, I should have given, it to, given you one and passed them on. Everybody have one? Okay, everybody has one? Okay, and I even wore red for the mood. Um, what is L-O-V-E? Five W's. What is love? How does one express love? When do we say love? Why is there love? Where did love originate? Question. A man says, I love you. What does he mean? A woman says, I love you. What does she mean? For singles, does love to him mean sex? Does love to her mean a special closeness, non-sexual intimacy? What do married couples mean when they use the word love? Conceptualize. Is it possible to fall in love? Can one fall out of love? Who said falling? Doesn't that sound like a setup for getting hurt? Why not going, becoming, getting, to be, being? Does it have to be falling? What? Oh, the pain when one loves another, but it is not reciprocated. English uses love to express many ideas. Have you heard, I love, my blouse, sweatshirt, jewelry, house, job, book, Swimming, music, TV, I love you. Any others? Oh yes, a myriad. Is it really love? Greek has a few words to express types of love. Philea, affectionate regard, friendship, usually between equals, brotherly love. Philadelphia takes its name from this form. Eros, mostly of the sexual passion. Storge, love, affection and especially of parents and children, and agape, the love of God for humans and of humans for God. Love was not meant to keep to oneself. Love was meant to be given, shared. Love that is shared multiplies, grows. Sounds like a paradox, but it is true. Love is patient, kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, does not dishonor others is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, always protects, always trusts, trust, always hopes, always pers perseveres, love never fails, great love, for God so loved, God gave. And I have three footnotes and the fourth one as a verbal one. Uh, the Greek, that came from the famous Wikipedia. And then that list of what love is, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8a. And then it's a partial quote from John 3.16. And to let you know, I had seriously considered not putting that line in because of the audience that this poem was going to. And I thought, you know... That's how I would like to write it. And since everybody shares lots of other th thoughts, I, you know, and I'm thinking about um, adding a little bit more to it. So, love. May we all share it. Mm -hmm.
Did you happen to hear any of you, the shrink who was on NPR talking about love uh, in the last couple of days? No, Patricia, you sometimes listen to NPR, don't you? She's a, she's a, a rather famous psychologist who's written a book on love and, and how people fall in love or fall out of love or uh, become attracted to each other. And, uh, so she, it's quite fascinating. You know, there's a, she actually works for one of these dating game uh, places, with My Harmony or whatever, one of those things. And, and uh, that's the most amazing thing. That's, uh, one of the things that, that happens to two people who are not necessarily uh, well connected, if they just look, sit very close to each other and stare into each other's eyes for a long yeah. period of time, they, they will feel an attraction to each other. They may, they may call it love. Uh, we don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> but it's they certain chemistry. About a series of questions with it, thirty-eight or sixty-eight or something like that. Yeah. Questions yeah. that it, you compatibility. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Eyes are the pathway to the soul. Sure. I mean, uh, the social psychologists have been studying romantic love for some time. I'm not about to give any description of it or whatever. Just to mention, those who are interested, check the social psychology of love. <laughs> but what you say back to your poem, but it reminds me of uh, George W. Bush looking into the eyes of Putin. Yeah. Or Margaret Thatcher looking into the eyes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's love, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So I'm glad you didn't self censor your poor. I mean, you should not. No, do you don't that. do that. Think, yeah, don't ever do that. So well, I am conscious, you know, of the, the group, and, you know, I want to be respectful and, and considerate. And nobody body. here can't take care of themselves, Patricia. <laughs> do do look into the social psychology of love, though. Okay. There's books on it. And when you're done, yeah. then you can look into the social pathology of love. <laughs> <laughs> and criminality. <so. laughs> and then the ain't love. <laughs> in, in your poem, as well as in what Larry wrote, there's this emphasis on giving. And... Uh, I think we often forget the beauty of receiving mm -hmm. because it is in receiving that we allow the person mm -hmm. to give, to mm -hmm. give. And um, I, I, I just remember when I was a kid, my father would never, was never very good at receiving anything. So mm -hmm. a present would just be kind of, oh yeah, thank you, and pushed away. And it really, it did not sit very well with mm -hmm. me. So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an ability to receive. Yes. A, a grace, and not only a grace, but a giving and receiving. Yes. And uh, I think be that's sure important. to make the giver yeah. feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to be I would. I would agree with you. Since he's out seeking to be, feel felt good, he's yeah. seeking feeling good yeah. by giving gifts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See a, see the author Moss M A U S S on the book yeah. called The Gift. You're familiar. Okay. There's also a real uh, a, a challenge to receiving. Um, a friend, a very good friend of mine, when I was uh, was uh, when I was younger, had would go to New York uh, City and open his guitar case and play guitar. Mm. And he said it was the hardest thing he ever did was to beg, literally beg mm -hmm. for money. Yeah. Um, and so, it's saying I have nothing and I'm, I'm receiving from you is a very very difficult thing. Yeah. But it is really important. For Pete's sake, scientists would be respected more, I think, if they would quit saying things like time doesn't exist. <laughs> if they have a different definition of time, then they should spit it out. People who talk like that shouldn't be trusted. <laughs> 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 so much for understanding there, kiddo. <laughs> I love it. Who trusts it's clear? I don't even know in their heads how they can say that. Oh, there's another one. Oh, you don't need any more. Here comes the one that we showed.
our wheels turning, whether steel or rubber, our visions, visage tense and grim, no room to babble and blubber. The road widened as we neared the first suburb, so we continued abreast despite the high curb. On our right, we approached a tall white steeple, a once country church suffering now a shortage of people. Soon there were houses and stores on each side, some boarded up as though the recession to hide. Now again, there were some pastures with cattle grazing. Those few farmers' dedication won the preachers praising. The sirens with buildings on both sides sounded increasingly loud. There were sidewalks on which gathered a wandering crowd. We could see black smoke at the base of the white cloud. It came from the courthouse of which the citizens were proud. The whole center of town could be swallowed by fire for the wind rose up and flying embers were dire. We leapt from our wheels and on foot ran like a storm where citizens now a bucket brigade had formed. The smoke was thick and the embers hot but we labored tirelessly, all caution forgot, till the flames became steam and the smoke suppressed. The interior was scorched, the foul soaked, scattered, all messed. The walls of the structure were saved with our aid. As we helped clean up the mess, new friends were made. Then we went down the block, bought cheeseburgers and fries, remounted our steeds, rubbing smoke-stinging eyes. As slowly we pedaled, retracing our way home, we were happy and exhausted, needing a bath and a comb. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you laugh uh, when you're in your room by yourself reading your poems? <laughs> Do you? I'm not aware of it. <laughs> You'll have to. <laughs> yeah. Don't you laugh? He giggles. <laughs> at least, at least I laugh at my poetry. It's hilarious sometimes. At least the scooters didn't die. <laughs> yeah. Right. I I had considered knocking, you know, two off so that only one survived, <laughs> yeah. but that somehow didn't suit the rest of the story. Whatever. So yeah. So Browning, Browning was inspiring. <laughs> If we want to quickly turn over the page, uh, we, we have uh, time for another not very good Villanelle, Seeking Utopia. Uh, the notion is that, uh, you know, when one ascends to heaven, you have 72 virgins. I suppose they could be female or male, or perhaps if your choice was they could be mixed, 72, I don't know. Uh, anyway, who knows? Uh, you know, but the, the idea is that maybe your greatest wish would be answered when you arrive there to heaven. So we're seeking this utopia, if you will. As we decide when reaching heaven's gate, we have to choose what life we would prefer. Our choice would leave us in a changeless state. Can we be authors of our final fate? To what aspect of life do we refer as we decide when reaching heaven's gate? Was life the best at early times or late? We've learned that boredom we cannot endure. Our choice will leave us in a changeless state. Our tastes dictate we set a perfect plate, all miseries of life. Why not deter as we decide when reaching heaven's gate? All life is change a fact we cannot debate. Though constant peace and joy we might prefer, our choice will leave us in a changeless state. Allowed to heaven sounds so very great, but will it be from stressful life a cure? As we decide when reaching heaven's gate, our choice will leave us in a changeless state. <laughs> Nothing so boring. And my my famous poem is "Too much euphoria begins to bore you." <laughs> but I do want to know why you considered heaven a changeless state. Well, uh, I was doing some reading, and I was inspired by by the reading of this notion of uh, our our sense of if we could only get things just the way we want them, 
the understanding that we have of life is that that would be extremely boring. No matter what it is, you get bored with it. 72 virgins? God, this is getting boring. There must be something else to do. Let's have a little conflict instead of love or something to shake things up. That's human nature to have some, as they say, life is change. There's nothing unchanging in life but change, right? So that's what this is sort of a so, peon to. But my question is, do you think the afterlife has no change in it once you get there? Well, uh, what I don't... I don't think much about the afterlife, but uh, assuming that the afterlife is this utopia, it's just wonderful, you know. Uh -huh. And what makes it wonderful uh -huh. for you? I don't know. To every person, what would be wonderful is different. Yeah. And yet, if it's their wonder, maybe all I want to do is sit in my easy chair, listen to Bach, and eat chocolate candies. You know, okay, that would be heaven if I could only do that any time I wanted. Well, supposing you had to do that all the time. If that's all you do, Bach, endlessly Bach, and endless chocolates. You know, really dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you would only live longer if they are dark chocolate. <laughs> Maybe this is the afterlife. <laughs> right. This is, Maybe this we, is the afterlife. Yeah, we've, we've all gone before. Some, yeah, exactly. You know, as... Right. Inchworms or something. Yeah. In our last life, we said if we could only write poetry with a group of supportive poets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did. For all of eternity? <laughs> <laughs> Just for one life. Okay. <laughs> hey, maybe we can stretch time a little bit and Patricia can. Well, let me qualify my statement. It is a finished product the way that it presently exists. But my choice is I want to add more. Um, that's why there's a blank space. I don't time until next time, okay? Answer, please, but don't answer today, okay? Or you can, and like I said, I won't tell you. What comes after B but is not C? One is inside, the other outside. Times two equals two times. One has four, the other has more. One has two, the other has five. Two plus three. Complex and uncomplicated, many more than we. One has one, alas, there's none. Up. How does it stay up? No, not up. It goes down, but it stays up. One is big for its size, but oh, so small. The other should be just right. With pampering, it becomes big. That makes things tight. Careful, you could get hurt. Should we be overt? Will you get the point? Hexagon or box? One flees from a fox, the other mocks. Both have potential. Their information essential. Grab a pencil. Don't be judgmental. A judge could find them helpful. Give them a medal. One was a mayor. Amazingly, another a queen. A reduced risk, risk of strokes cause the death of folks. How many does it have? A different letter makes a place to live. What comes after B but is not C, but commences with that, but's related to that? What about D, E, F, G? Better try H. O, which is it? Well, and they're all clues. <laughs>
into the stirrup and Joris and he, I galloped, Dirk galloped, we galloped all three. Good speed, cried the watch as the gate bolts drew.